Holly Rachel Candy, known professionally as Holly Valance, is an Australian former actress, singer and model. Best known for playing Flick Scully on the Australian hit soap Neighbours, her rise to music fame came via a cover of a hit Turkish pop song and an iconic music video. Further singles and albums would follow before Holly would return to acting and modelling, leaving her pop music past far behind her. With classic singles and two albums that fans still love and discuss today, these are the musical footprints of Holly Valance. Holly Valance was born on the 11th of May 1983 and would grow up in Victoria, Melbourne in Australia. There's no gory stories to tell. Went to really good schools, had wonderful friends and supportive family. I mean, my parents divorced when I was four, but all the halves and the steps and everything, we all hang out together. My step and my mum are best friends, which everyone finds it quite unbelievable. They just hang out every day. And it's good because it means that, you know, when mum dropped me off at dad's house, it wasn't a block before his house. Holly was cashing in on her good looks from an early age, earning $300 an hour as a model by the time she was 12. I was always aware of people sort of looking at me when I was younger and I didn't know quite know why because I couldn't see when I look in the mirror, it's just the same old head I've been looking at for nearly 20 years now, so I kind of just go, oh, that old chestnut. And as I got older and more of a woman, because I'm so old now, um, yeah, I suppose that's when it sort of bumped up a couple of notches, but I was still a bit like, what are you looking at? I was brought up in Melbourne, and I left when I was 18, moved here for two years to the UK, seven um, to LA, and then back nearly for two now. And tell me about your parents, where are they from? Uh, my mum is from Southampton and we have Spanish grandparents and my dad is Serb from Montenegro. What was it like growing up in Melbourne? It was very eclectic, everyone's pretty much first generation Australian so there's a big mixture of Greek, Italian, Turkish, Lebanese, um, Chinese, we we're all a big melting pot which I kind of loved. Do you miss it? I miss the people, I don't think I would live there probably ever again. You've got British citizenship. <laughs> I do, so you can't was, get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I was practicing saying that before this interview. Um, so what do you consider yourself? A Brit? Australian? Uh, everything, really. I think mum calls me a citizen of the world now. You've got a green card as well. I do have a green card, yes, which is extra handy. How do you look back at your time on Neighbours? Uh, very fondly, and I'm still very close with all the cast and crew that I worked with. I was going to ask you that. Yeah, they're, they're, they'll be part of the family for years and years to come. You don't do 17 hours a day with people for three years straight without becoming like, it's like going to war together basically. How old were you when you started on Neighbours? 15 when I got the audition and I just turned 16 when I started. What was that like? Petrifying. I was trying to juggle school as well and I had um, about three months where I just thought I wasn't going to survive and I'd have to let one go and school loot lost in the end. She began modelling as a young teenager and in 1999 at the age of 16, Holly landed a role in the Australian TV soap opera Neighbours as Felicity Flick Scully. Her popularity in the role led to her making an appearance in Human Nature's music video for He Don't Love You in November 2000, in which she starred in a raunchy shower scene. In 2002, Holly would leave her role on Neighbours to pursue her own music career. I first saw Holly like when she was 16 and, uh, and she basically wanted to sing. At first I was just you know, like, oh yeah, well another soap star that wants to have a career in singing and all the rest of it. Um, what impressed me about her was her persistence and uh, the fact that she worked incredibly hard. Um, she worked with a vocal coach and, you know, we kept on basically working with her until she felt right, until we felt right. We went through that process for about a year and a half. It was just obvious after that period of time that she had the goods. Holly and the team at Engine Room experimented with sounds from all around the world to create the musical atmosphere for her debut album, Footprints. 
from Melbourne, considering how multicultural it is, everyone's Turkish and Greek and Lebanese and Yugoslav, and I've always been around that at everyone's family's house, so I suppose that's where that music didn't sound that unfamiliar to me. And I think also she, she's, her look is exotic and it suits those kind of beats, you know. They're great beats. Holly worked with a variety of producers for her debut album, including Cut Father, Kylie Minogue collaborators Julian Gallagher and Biff Stannard, Nellie Hooper and Phil Thornalley. She co-wrote the track The Harder They Come with Rob Davis, who supplied guitar for the album. So the first probably few minutes of it, I was probably just cringing and, and hating every moment. But I think I was kind of going, just think of the finished product, think of the finished product, rather than, oh, I hope the crew's not looking at what I'm doing now. And... With help from a flesh-coloured bikini and some computer effects, Holly appeared virtually naked in the video to her first single, Kiss Kiss, a funky remake of a Turkish hit. And that wasn't even my idea, it was the director's idea on the day. And, and it was great, it was a really good experiment for me because I kind of went... Let's see what happens when I do this. When you look at me, tell me what do you see? This is what you get, the way I am. I was watching it on my couch through a crack in the cushions, so I didn't see too much of it because I was really nervous and I wanted to watch it by myself, but my boyfriend said, no, no, we'll watch it together, we'll watch it together. And I was like, oh, God. And I put it on and I watched it and then my boyfriend went, oh, it's going to be big. <laughs> Shimmerich, or Spoilt, is a 1997 song by Turkish singer Tarkan. When the single was released in Europe, it reached number one in Belgium, number two in Norway, plus number three in Switzerland, France, Germany and the Netherlands. Many versions of the song were recorded in different languages, most notably the English language cover titled Kiss Kiss by Greek-American singer Stella Soleil in 2001. Released on the 29th of April 2002, Holly's version of Kiss Kiss became the lead single from her upcoming album. The single was hugely successful, debuting at number one in the UK and selling over 143,000 copies in its first week. Equally successful in Australia, the single would also debut at number one on the ARIA singles chart. The song peaked at number two in Ireland and in the top five in Hungary and Italy at number three. You could be my baby with the star sign Would you take a step and look at I understand Kiss Kiss was certified platinum in Australia and gold here in the UK. The song was nominated for four ARIA Music Awards in 2002. You don't have to act like a sun Trying to lose in the back of your car But you know that we can go far Cause the magic gonna get mine Don't play the games that you play Cause you know that I won't run away Why ain't you asking me to stay? Cause the I'm gonna keep you mine First off,
congratulations, number one. Thank you very much. This isn't bad. Number one in the UK and in Australia. Pretty stoked. <sighs> it's exciting. I didn't think it would happen. Mm. But damn good all the same. Now, would you say that some of this has to do with the fact that the film clip is a little bit sexy? <laughs> Maybe. Was that, was that the intention, to have a, a, a raunchy film clip to, to I think the reason why we went with the sort of raw, more raunchier side was to get away from the flick category that I'm in. And not that that's a bad thing, but it's just that this is what I'm doing now. So it was a bit of shock value never heard anyway. Oh, you're not, you're, you're not wrong. I mean, it looks like... <laughs> it, re it seriously looks like you were nude. I think people have probably seen the clip a number of times now. Were you, are you naked? Were you naked? I wasn't really naked. I had a flesh bikini on. Just as in the bottoms and the tops, or yes, just yeah, and some special effects kicked in. <laughs> you mean your nipples don't really light up like no, that? No, no. <laughs> Friday nights sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Do you, do you worry that uh, you know there are teenagers around around the, the world taping it and watching it in slow mo just to see? Not if they really, because I glimpse? checked myself. So I know did you really? It's, it's all good. <laughs> 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 so, uh, do you think there's going to be a, a problem trying to launch yourself with a, with a sexy clip like this? Would it clash with your neighbour's um, persona? I don't think so. I thought that I was going to get a lot more negative feedback, but I haven't received any so far. It's been wonderful. So, I, I've been so lucky, I think, to merge quite easily from the neighbours and the acting side into the music now, which is great. Do, do you feel comfortable uh, uh, making film clips like that? And you've done like a number of shoots for yeah. magazines like FHM where you're almost naked anyway? Exactly. Now, I'm pretty comfortable with my skin. I don't really have a problem with it. I'm pretty cool with that kind of stuff. So it wasn't that big a deal and it was all very professional and all done very well. Now, it, would you say, because uh, there's probably a, a lot of critics out there who would say that sometimes, like especially if you're going from uh, a, a soap star um, uh, background into, into music, mm -hmm. that uh, it certainly helps to be good looking. Would you, what do you say to people who would, you know, critics who say, oh, well, it, it's just not so much the musical talent, but hey, the, the sex and the, and the body that gets you through? Yeah, it does. It sells, whether you like it or not, it does. Um, but I think it's the whole package. It's, it's the look and it's the music. It's everything, I think. And it's been a good mix so far. Did you, did you have a reluctance to get into music for fear of, of people's None reactions? Not at all, because it was what I was doing before I started on the show. So it was really just going back to what I wanted to do in the beginning. Um, so it was, it was pretty natural for me, and I love doing it. So I'm wrapped that I can get back into it now. And uh, do you have to always ask, uh, like, for example, when the clip comes out, did you actually have to go to the neighbour's people and ask them if, no, it, if they would mind? No, I kind of kept it under wraps. I didn't want to sort of tell anyone what I was doing until I had something to show for it. So I was really, really quiet, and I didn't tell anyone. Really only my best friends up until the last sort of two months. Other than that, no one knew anything. So I was a bit frightened, I suppose, to show everyone what I was doing and getting up to on my holidays and my weekends. But when I had something to show for it, then I was like, here you go, here I am. <laughs> So she's packed in the acting to join a long line of girls next door turned songstress. In the beginning I thought it was going to be a real issue with the soapy star going into music thing and it hasn't been at all. Um, I thought in the UK I was going to get sledged completely for, you know, because Natalie's done it and Kylie's done it. And there's all these people that haven't quite done as well as them. Are you following in Kylie's footsteps? Not so much in the way of music, but I'd love to follow in her footsteps in the way of success. Now this single that you're doing now, Kiss Kiss, mm -hmm. it's obviously a cover by T Tarkin or Tarkin, Tarkin yeah. that's right. Are you going to be doing your own stuff? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What kind of sound sure. can we expect? There's lots of different stuff. Um, the album's going to be very different. I haven't written all of it, but there'll be mm -hmm. some tracks that I have. I suppose I kind of end up writing stuff that's a bit folky when people listen to it, mm. which is weird because I don't. I just sort of do my thing and then they listen right. to it and tell me how it sounds. You don't really know if you're doing it yourself. Um, but there's going to be lots of stuff on the rock and some R&B and yeah, it's going to be cool. Cool. She's a number one hit throughout Europe and the UK. In the UK they've got so many radio stations and TV shows and magazines and all these things that you've got to do and you've got to do so much promotion so I've just been trying to get to all of them. What most surprised me about Holly was how she was handling the press and how she was handling the record labels and how she was handling radio interviews. Um, all that stuff's so important and her personality is what carries it through. Hi, this is Holly Blatt and I can confirm that Joe has access to all our areas. Oh my heavens. Oh, oh my. Sorry darling. You think I, I would work that out, wouldn't you? Long <laughs> thing. It's true actually. It's <laughs>
she is so down to earth and then she just you know has that ability to come to life and to really perform and just to yeah but still carry that quality with her when she's on stage and as a star and the woman of the year is miss holly Phillips. I'd like to say thank you to GQ, I'm a, a real big newcomer to all of this and to have their support is wonderful. So. After being voted GQ Magazine's Woman of the Year, Holly headed off to perform for her squealing fans in Japan. I wonder how you say kiss kiss in Japanese. What's really hard is when you go international and you do um, uh, with the interpreter thing and they're talking really really loudly you're trying to hear this little voice in your ear well I, I'm having such a good time I mean I have it looks really good because it looks like you understand everything they're saying no time for loitering Holly was back on the set in no time to film the video for her second single down boy and this one looks just as raunchy Joined us finally, we're going through the glamorising process at the moment. Looking like a drowned dog at this stage, but Mark's a, a whiz with a couple of curling irons, we'll be right. Getting nervous now, come on, come on, have a look. I've got no idea what I'm actually doing, I'm just going to wing it on the jump. After nine hours of dance rehearsals, I don't know how. Cramping up already. <laughs> I want all you bastard men out there to wear a pair of these for a day, okay? See how you look. My favourite hairstyle was definitely my afro in the dance routine. Not a hair took from seven in the morning to about four. Four in the afternoon. I'm surprised my head wasn't bleeding. <laughs> Too much pain. The worst part of the video would have been that hairdo, but at the end of the day, it looked pretty cool. So I had to be quiet. Take the pain, bitch. <laughs> so what I wanted to achieve from this video was more of a sense of progression from the last one. You know, we all know that she's great, she can move, she can dance, she looks amazing. But I wanted to give her something else, another side to her character, another little facet to what she's about. And that's really what it was about. That's what I was trying to achieve. Tim's fantastic. He's a really, really cool person to work with and he's open to suggestion and he... He's a real team player, he works with you, he's not dictating to me what he wants, you know, we sat down and discussed everything and, and worked out and if there was something I wasn't comfortable with or he wasn't comfortable with, then we were cool to talk about that. And he's a really lovely guy on top of that, so it made it such smooth sailing working with someone who's really, you know, just a cool guy in general, so it was nice, really good. <laughs> Alright, well here we are on the set, this is the hotel scene, we've got this very stylish pleather couch. This is something that you could only find in op shops, it's very classy little number, some waterfalls that they light up and all this stuff, it's really cool, it's kind of 80s, really tacky, dirty kind of hotel room. Naughty stuff goes on here, like this, this beautiful piece of tapestry here, it's a lovely touch. <laughs> We've got the bed happening here, a bit of a bathroom thing. Alcos pigging out. It's going to be a mad party here tonight. Kind of 
cool, but it was really hot and it was three o'clock in the morning by that stage, I think, and you know, in a, in a leather jacket that's been so warm lately, it was stifling in that car, so I was kind of glad to get out of there. I was getting a little bit dizzy towards the end. That car is just, she just looks so great in it, and she suits it really, really well. As soon as she saw it and as soon as she got into it, she just fitted perfectly. She just looked great in it, and she worked. I mean, it's hard to say working a car, but she worked it really well. When I met Tim, the director, um, we sat down, listened to the track, realized it was a little bit different from the other one, but the other one was such a major hit all over the world that people are like doing the steps from it, you know, so, so we tried to keep the same vibe, the same style with Holy, which is very street, very funky, it's like very young so that young kids can like appreciate it, like it and pick it up and do it at home and stuff like that. The choreography is so cool. When the boys first performed it for me to say this is what we're going to be doing the film clip, I almost had a heart attack. I thought there is no way on earth I'm going to be able to do this dance and that's the beauty of editing. So it was a lot of fun learning it and it took a few days of rehearsals and a lot of grueling hours. I lost about five kilos I think forming up but um, Luke is brilliant. I was so happy with it all and it's really cool, you know, you just want to watch it and boogie. There's a really funny side to the choreography because I picked up some steps from the 80s. And one, and, That's and, true. And, 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 and. We got another step called Roger Rabbit that goes that goes like that and oh, he's really cute when she does it. What was that? <laughs> They're very good looking, very good dancers, but they're kind of stupid. <laughs> oh, after nine hours of dance rehearsals, I don't know how. Cramping up already. Sacrifice I can make. Yes. Want all you men out there to wear a pair of these for a day, okay? See how you look. We had this um, enormous um, disc ball. Imagine like a, a, a disco ball. Um, that's pulled inside out, which is this big 30 foot. And to make it slightly different, we made it gold. And I just wanted something that was, that was different to what's being seen on TV. Holly will be dancing in this ball with her dancers. They've got a routine. Um, we started work on this a week ago, and it was quite a long process, getting all the curves correct to give us the effect of the ball. <laughs> The 30th of September 2002 saw the release of second single Down Boy, written by Rob Davis and produced by Nellie Hooper. Down Boy charted within the top 5 in the UK, peaking at number 2, number 3 in Australia, and within the top 10 in Hungary and Ireland at number 8. Holly's debut album, Footprints, was released on the 14th of October 2002. Despite mixed reviews, it went on to reach number 9 in the UK, selling over 100,000 copies and being certified gold. The album would chart at number 15 in Australia, also receiving a gold certification. Footprints saw success in Japan, where the album reached number 19 on the Oricon Albums chart, selling over 159,000 copies, again being certified gold.
Australia's hottest star. Now own her amazing album, Footprints. Already two huge hits and counting. Footprints, full of hits. Holly the Land's Footprints, the perfect pop album, in store now. This is Holly Valance with her debut album Footprints featuring all her hits the massive number one Kiss Kiss Down Boy and the brand new single Naughty Girl Holly Valance her new album Footprints out now The album's third and final single, Naughty Girl, was released on the 9th of December 2002. It was written by Grant Black, Cozy Costi, Deborah French and Brio Talifero and produced by Phil Thornalley. Naughty Girl debuted at number three on the Australian singles chart and became the third consecutive single from Footprints to reach the top 10 in the country. The single was less successful in the UK where it missed the top 10, peaking at number 16. has gone gold already, new album. Yeah. Your debut single went to number one. Mm -hmm. What has been the personal highlights for you? Uh, I bits? think getting it done was something that I'd wanted to do for a long time because it's very hard doing Neighbours at the same time. So for me, that was like my own kind of goal was done. And obviously going number one here was wonderful for me. So Not bad, is it? Straight in a number one? Oh, it's Can't fantastic. really knock it. No, it's well, only down from here, I suppose. No, it's only up. <laughs> 2003, you're on your way up. We'll see. But there's a dress code oh. you Tuck Your Shirt In was scheduled for release in the UK on the 10th of March 2003. However, the single was cancelled following the disappointing chart performance of Naughty Girl. For Holly's second album, she would collaborate with producers such as Steve Anderson and Rick Knowles and would co-write four of the album's 12 tracks. When talking about her change of musical direction, Holly stated that at the time she was listening to rock, dance and lots of electro and loved them all equally. She liked the idea of fusing those influences together to see what would happen. The people she was working with at the time really liked that idea. 
got a new album I called do. State of Mind. Mm -hmm. And you've written some of the tracks on I this, have, yeah. Right? This time it was great because I was living in London and I could be there from start to finish and really sink my teeth into every aspect of it. And I love doing that and I can't wait to do that even more so with the next album. So it's, it's been, you know, a really enjoyable experience. Hi guys, we're here on the set of my new video for State of Mind. There's a million trucks here, lots of crew. ready to shoot a house party looking very glamorous so I'm having my eyebrows drawn in, eyelashes stuck on, cheekbones chiseled and ready. As you can see we're here in LA shooting which is nice because it suns out. Like Jake Nava is the director of uh, Naughty Girl and we loved that video so we got him back in to do State of Mind so he showed me the treatment and I kind of trusted him because I knew he does a good job so I, I left it up to him. All I need. The video starts off me cruising around my big powerful car, cruising around the streets, I arrive at this club. We're here in the Mel nightclub downtown in LA, setting up for her performance sequence. It's very hot and sweaty and everyone's dancing around mentally and then, you know, me up on stage having a good old time. And we come back to this lovely 70s pad and, uh, and it's like the after party. Get probably a little down and dirty, so you know, you have to wait and see what happens. On the 20th of October 2003, Holly was back with lead single State of Mind. The song peaked at number 14 on the Australian singles chart and became Holly's third top 10 single in the UK, peaking at number 8. Released on the 6th of November 2003, State of Mind received positive reviews from music critics. However, in Australia, the record would chart at number 57 on the Aria Albums chart. Disappointingly, the album saw even less success in the UK, where it reached number 60, making it her lowest selling album in both countries. The album did, however, see success in Japan, where it debuted at number 12 on the Oricon Albums chart, with first week sales of 21,547 copies.
Desire was set to be released as the second single from State of Mind in February 2004. However, due to the album's underperformance, no further singles would be released, and Holly was dropped from London Records in early 2004. Following her departure from the label, Holly would return to acting, appearing in episodes of US shows such as CSI Miami and Entourage. Even if she still is your girlfriend, it's not really cheating if we're not in love. Just don't fall in love with me, okay? In 2005, Holly returned to music, albeit briefly, when she appeared on Harmar Superstar's album The Handler, singing on the tracks DUI, Back the Camel Up and Body Request. The day when I first held her hand. In 2009, Holly appeared in Frank Music's video for his single Confusion Girl. Game got swallowed up, it's such a shame, 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 shame. In 2010, Holly started dating British billionaire property developer Nick Candy, whom she married in September 2012 in Beverly Hills, California. They went on to have two children together. Further ventures into TV and commercials would follow until around 2013, where Holly took a hiatus from her artistic career to prioritize her family and has since been focusing on her charity work. Sorry, I'm not eavesdropping it. Yeah, I am. Is that Carl Kennedy? In 2022, Holly returned to Neighbours alongside fellow Aussie pop star and ex-Neighbours actress Natalie Imbruglia as part of a cameo for the final episode of The Long Running Soap. I was 24. I actually lived at 26 as well. What? <laughs> what are the chances? Oh, so many happy memories. My son Ned's been back recently. How oh, nice. Mm. I'm not sure about this song though. <laughs> yeah, Carl always fancied himself a bit of a singer. Well, apparently someone's getting married tomorrow. Someone named Toady. Do you know him? Toady. I thought everyone knew him. Yeah. Have you stopped singing? Have I? Yeah. Uh, I've stopped releasing records. Yeah, but I still do the odd bit on people's you know, records that, you know, the pressure's off me. If it bombs, who cares? I had fun in the studio that day. <laughs> Why did you stop then? I, I lost passion for it and it wasn't fun anymore. And this is not a dress rehearsal, this is my life. So if I'm not having fun, for the most part, move on. Despite a dedicated fan base for her music, Holly appears to have no further plans to return to the industry. However, with her two solo albums, iconic singles and music videos, Holly certainly left her footprints all over the early noughties music scene. Thanks for watching.